get on the fundamental domain. And which we call NA. So today, uh, I will focus on infinite translation surfaces, but of very special kind that are similar to the one in the wave model that are uh, covers. So, and actually, they will be regular. Uh, but I will call them normal, do not uh, overlap with the, with the talk we had about uh, regular telling. So normal covers uh, of compact and open surfaces. And the Winfrina model is an example of such surfaces. So tomorrow uh, it will be about the diffusion. So this is the filter which is a uh, the material that the signal presents. And the fourth one will be about the reference and the transients. And the last one on Friday uh, about the list, which is a bit more technical. model you have this surface M A <laughs> and the question is how do we pass from this M A B to the to the wind tree model? So we lose some information but the information we lose is somewhat captured with some some data on the surface. And so each, each copy corresponds to a reflective copy and uh, yes, perhaps you want the gluings so this is glued to there this is glued there and you repeat the pattern this corresponds to the obstacles which is here and so you pass in a reflective copy but this side is glued to this side Can you write a little bigger, please? Bigger. A little bigger. From now on, yes. From now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, uh, this side is particular because if you cross it, you change from one fundamental domain to another one. So, this is exactly the information you need to go from this surface to the Winston model. Is to care about the, yeah, the horizontal pieces that, that I'm writing here. And the vertical, yeah, the vertical transition between the fundamental domains. And so each time you cross one of these curves, uh, you will change from one fundamental domain to the other. So this corresponds to the original copy. So let's say that we go up when we cross this in the positive, with the positive crossing. But this is a reflected copy with respect. You are there when you pass through uh, a sky, horizontal. Uh, you made the horizontal ribbon to get there. So if you cross the same uh, curve, you get down. So here, each time you cross uh, in the positive direction, you should do minus zero one. Uh, in the same way, each time you cross here, it's also uh, a plus, but here it's a minus. And for this, it corresponds to the horizontal direction, but it's quite similar. Uh, those two correspond to going on the right, and those two, which are the right of the copy, correspond to go on the left. So, 
now imagine I, I have Z2 copy of those. So what I will do is to build the unfolding construction of the Winfrey model that Samuel uh, just drafted. So let's call it, uh, I don't know, an tilde AB, which is a cover of this, with fiber Z2. And how is it built? You pick Z2 copy of this, and you glue them according to uh, what is written on there. So this is normally glued to this, but in M tilde AB, you glue this side to uh, the copy at uh, plus one. So this is the unit of MAB uh, times uh, Z2. So this is not exactly MAB because you need to cut, so we cut along. Uh, that you have a lot and a lot of covers. So if you have a surface and if you have a group, uh, you have natural generators for your pi one. If your surface is represented by a polygon, you have natural generators. So you pick a point for a base for your fundamental group 
and you choose the curve which goes from one side to the other. Let's call it theta uh, v. Yes, curve is over here. Generators, so the generators you can push them in, the, in F. So it has a, so you can consider the the map which goes from the fundamental group to F, which is a projection. And so, and uh, moreover, uh, you have multiplication by the by these elements on the fiber on the right. And this is how you do back the surface. So imagine that I am. A, B, C, D, A, approximately. And imagine here, this is a copy small g. Where I, do I do everything? I do this side, so this is copy g. I do this side, so g in f. I do this side to the copy g times theta a, which also belongs to a. And the the eta a which is below. I use this a to the to this one, but in, a, in another copy. And I do the same along this cd, and that way I get exactly the cover with this normal uh, determined by this normal sub. So uh, yeah, this is general construction of normal covers. And why is it normal? This is because the group has transitivity. And why is that so? Is that because, because L is normal, this quotient is actually a group, and so uh, this group gives you a, a, a photomorphism of that surface, and so each copy looks the same. Yeah, this is sort of a homogeneity of that problem. So now I want to turn to dynamics. So uh, Samuel introduced interval exchanges. for uh, normal covers. So if you pick if you pick exactly exactly the boundary here as a as a transverse section, so I, I, I'm always interested in the vertical top. So if you pick this interval, which uh, belongs to the surface as a as I mentioned, you this segment belongs to here. So uh, if you look at the first return times 
uh, of the vertical flow in that segment, it's exactly an ex interval exchange rule formation. Here with four intervals. So we see CAP, CGA. And so this is on N, but on N tilde, if you pick all, uh, all intervals which belong to all copies that you get, what you get is called a skew product. So let's call it the interval I and the map T. So T. So uh, ah, I got S. S is not good, sorry. So, but I never use this, so it's okay. I want to call it TF, uh, which is uh, a map which go from I times uh, big F, which is my fiber, to I times big F. And so this is, uh, if you, if you have one interval in each copy. And what is a map? It's actually easy to describe. If you have a point X, G, you send it to x, g, of f, of a, theta. Let's say theta x, where theta x equal theta a if x, x belongs to the interval associated with a. So if, if x was here, you see that I pick my point x here, and I look at the first written diamond here, I change from one copy to the copy which is determined by multiplication by eta a. So the copy in which I get is the multiplication on the right by eta a. So if I am in a, I want to multiply on the right by no, by exactly eta a. Sorry. So this is just right multiplication. And yeah, if you are in b, you want to multiply by eta b, etc. So this is what we call a skew product. And so this kind of map is called a skew. So if there is an F here and there's an eta here, I'm sorry. So generally I want to write it that way. You have a map X, G which maps to x and g of something which depend on x. Do you also want a g in this? What? Do you want a g in this? Definitely, yes. <laughs> Thank you. If there is no t, it's not really the first written name <laughs> of the flow. So, yes. I want this map to be the first written time of the flow on the infinite surface. Yeah. So I need a t here. And what is important here is to notice that if I take powers of this map, is what I'm interested in is long time behavior of the translation flow. So I want to iterate this map. And if you do that, it's just in the first component you just act like t, so it's just t and x. But in the other component, something interesting happens. You are multiplying along uh, you are multiplying by the value of f along your bit of x. So, this is in the general case, but if, uh, if the cover is abelian, so what does it mean? Abelian means that the quotient, so f, f is a group. This f is a group, because it's a quotient by a normal sub group. If f, abelian means f abelian. This means, if it's abelian, it means that everything here commutes, and I can even write it with plus instead of multiplication, and so these terms become uh, g plus f of x plus f of tx, blah blah blah. And this quantity is what we call a Birkhoff sum. Kirchhoff sums of a function uh, on interval exchange is actually completely related to understanding the, the flow in some infinite surface. So here uh, you have 16 intervals. So you can do exactly the same construction. You start from the 16 intervals that operates here. 
uh, Samuel writes explicitly the interval exchange. And on the copy which corresponds to this part and this part, you just have a function for which the values are written on the blackboard. So the function f, so let's call it i, the union of these four intervals. And you have a function from i to z2. And the values are here. So I just write f restricted to a0, 0. a0 is that, that guy. b0, 0 is this one. After that is c and d. So f to 0, 0 is plus 0, 1. <coughs> f to g0, 0, equal f respected to c0, 0, equal 0. And f respected to g0, 0, is my plus 1, 0. And then you, yeah, you end up. So this is a particular construction of So that's all. Now I want to do some uh, algorithmic theory of skew products. So this will be a bit abstract, but the theorem I want to emphasize are some, yeah, some links between. So what are the quantities we, we want to discuss? Uh, so I erase everything, but this recurrence, uh, transient, and uh, diffusion. So yeah, recurrence and transient and diffusion. I won't speak about ergodicity. I will let it for the last course. So in diff uh, diffusion. Right? So I want to introduce some quantities, uh, but in this general scheme, and then uh, I will uh, I will discuss some relation between them and some relation between properties of the group F that we use to make you cover and properties that you expect to get. So uh, perhaps it's good to make a reminder of what happens for uh, random walk on groups. Uh, So it will be very quick. So you can think of it as a random walk on the group, except that uh, the steps you are doing are not completely random, but determined by the orbit of your point x. Uh, so if you do a random walk on a group, uh, what we know is uh, if your group, so about recurrence and transients, uh, so recurrence, uh, it's actually equivalent to have uh, so when you have a group, you have a kilograph, you can consider a kilograph, and kilograph, you can measure the size of balls. And uh, gro this is equivalent for gross of balls in G. Oh, so is, my group is F, sorry. F uh, is uh, less than quadratic. exchanges are a bit too particular, so let's consider a, a map T from X to X, and if you don't want to consider a general map, just think of it as an interval exchange. So, a map between Borel space. Sorry, so an interval is Borel. Yes? Sorry, I'm sorry. Probably, uh, I didn't get then the balls there for the world map. Oh yeah, there is, no, no, there is something wrong here. Uh, Sorry, I, I, there is mean zero, and the location of what about that? What are the metrics? The, the metric on the kilograph. Okay, the, the gross of balls does not depend on the metric on the kilograph. I will speak more about uh, gross of balls later. Okay. Uh, spaces that preserve uh, uh, 
a non-atomic measure, measure mu. So an interval exchange is a perfect example of that. So think of it as an interval exchange. Uh, and the measure mu is a Lebesgue measure because the interval exchange is piecewise translation of result in Lebesgue. And so given a group f and given f from x to f, we can build uh, the two product as I did before from x time f to x time f given by x g is map to x g time m of x. And what I want to do is to study general properties of this TF. Yes. TX. Correct? TX. T? No, this is an F. Now it is an F, sorry. Very last thing you wrote. What? Left the TF. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you uh, continue to remind <laughs> me that there is a TF. <laughs>
and just set it to be B's positive. Well, this is a fairly equivalent to what we wrote here. And how do you do that? You have something of positive measure, which is B, or A, as you wish. And when you iterate it backward, so mu of A is the same as mu of t minus 1 of A is the same as blah, 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 as mu t minus n of A. So all these sets are the same measures. And your total mass is finite, so you, you need there, there needs to be an intersection at some point. So and the total mass is finite. So this implies that there exists two index and one and two, uh, positive and different, such so that uh, t minus n one of a intersected with t. so my a is b sorry but if you prove the statement for a it is the same as putting for b the measure of that is uh, positive but once you do that you just so imagine that n1 is bigger so you rewrite it as uh, t minus n2 of t minus n1 minus n2 a intersected with b intersected with b and because this is of so this is the point and because this is of the measure this is also the measure of this then for times n minus n2 you are going to you, you go back to the so in finite if you preserve a finite measure you automatically have recurrence so where it is non-trivial here is because my fiber f is infinite and I have an infinite measure and recurrence is no more automatic. So an example of a map which for which you do not have recurrence. So example. You pick x then x plus 1 from r to r. So this is not a black measure. And clearly you do not have any recurrence. So no recurrence. So the question is for infinite uh, case. Do we are in that situation, or can we still have some uh, recurrence? So, what is precisely real? What, what we mean by recurrence? So, precise definition. When should I stop? Okay. Uh, definition. So, uh, TF. So, TF is my skew product here. Is recurrent. If uh, for a in the so in the base with positive measure with respect to the measure in the base, uh, there exists n positive such that uh, mu. So you look at the time for which you come back arbitrarily close, but also for which you come back arbitrarily close in the fiber. So as my group is discrete, I want it to be in the density. So I introduce the notation here. So this is identity on f. Uh, is of positive measure. So what is this fn of x? This is just the product uh, along the orbit which determines the nth power. So this is just to say that you come back to the same fiber and you come back near your uh, initial set. So this is just the very same recurrence as a uh, somewhere introduced. And so I won't do the proof, but there is an equivalent definition for recurrence. No, there are two equivalent definitions, but when the map t is invertible, so I will only state it at the proposition. This is not hard to prove, so you may you can try to do the proof. So pick tf, and as before with the major mu and all that, and assume that uh, t is invertible. So I mean invertible as a Borel automorphism. So for the double exchange, you just, you just t minus one exists, so it's invertible. Then are equivalent. Uh, Almost every x in x, uh, fn of x, no identity of g. 
and there is this M, sorry, there is this M positive such that. So this is the same as going back to the fiber, but not necessarily linear. This is equivalent to saying that TF is recurrent, and this is also equivalent to saying that TF is what we call conservative. And what is conservative is mean uh, wandering set are of zero measure, and so I should define wandering set. So there is one, say, yeah, uh, this implication does not need invertibility, but when you go from here to, uh, from one to three, you need invertibility. So, yes, this sense, no invertibility needed. So what is wandering set? Uh, wandering set is just useful when you use it in proofs. Uh, for the definition, it's not that interesting, but when you do a proof or something, and I will use it if we have time, I hope I will. So wandering set is uh, to be included in your space, which is x time f, such that uh, t minus n of b are disjoint. So you have a set, and when you iterate it in the dynamics, everything is disjoint. So in the map x plus 1, if you pick the interval 0, 1, this is a wandering set because it does not intersect. Okay, so now I want to turn to diffusion rate, and I want to make some relation between the diffusion rate and the recurrent. So if it is not recurrent, we say that it is transient. And so perhaps before. There is an assumption which we come a lot of time and we saw it in the talk of Rodrigo. It's about ergodicity and unique ergodicity. So, if you have your map which preserves the probability measure mu, it is ergodic, called ergodic, if, uh, if, uh, if, if what, if A, if a including x t minus n one of a equals a implies that the measure is uh, zero, uh, zero or one. So it's sort of irreducibility of the space. You cannot cut it into two parts such that both are invariant in the dynamics and of positive measure. So this looks like in decomposability. So when you turn to an infinite measure, you have to take care about what definition you should take for ergodicity. And for internal exchange, there is something wonderful. Uh, so this is Kirchhoff Mazur's magnetic theorem. Uh, so if M is a translation surface, so for almost every tilde, so you fix an angle and you look at the translation flow in that direction. Uh, the, trans the associated translation flow is the nuclear uh, And you can even take the internal exchange, it's the same, the associated internal exchange is uniquely ergodic. So this is stronger than the ergodic. You have one important theorem, which is Birkhoff theorem, which is one of the so if t from x to x preserving mu the proba for its measure uh, is ergodic with respect to mu, uh, then for so I want to consider the growth. Uh, in the fiber, this is 
related to what uh, to the diffusion rate. For if you pick a map x from x to r, so this is only abelian case, but there is no general theorem for non-abelian case except for the depth theorem. Uh, then for f uh, l1, so integrable with respect to mu, uh, for almost every x, uh, if you look at the Birkhoff sum of your points and your average over n as n tends to infinity, this will look like the integral of f. So this means that x the orbit of x equidistributes with respect equidistributes to, with respect to the measure here. And in case of unique ergodicity, you can remove you can replace almost every by every. So unique ergodicity uh, can replace uh, almost every by every. But that has to be continuous. What? That has to be continuous. Right. You also want x to be compact. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to enter in detail right now because I want to stay theorem about uh, skew products. So if you do not know that, don't be scared. They will appear in, uh, in the next talk. Now, this is just to mention that if you start with a function f, which has a positive uh, measure with respect to a positive uh, mean with respect to mu, you cannot expect that your your construction will be regular. So, take a, imagine that this is z and no more r, and you look at the growth of these sums. And so, if this is positive, this will the sum will look like n times the integral of f d mu. So, you have no chance that this will be regular. And Actually, there is a nice theorem which says that the converse holds. So if t from x to x preserving mu ergodic, and t, you assume that it is invertible, uh, you pick f from x to z, then we have equivalence. So this is the theorem of Atkinson. Let's go back to, if I'm not mistaken, 76 then our equivalent uh, one uh, so you consider the skew product tf is recurrent and two uh, the integral of f the mu equals zero so there is one direction which is easy which is this one and the other one is not but it's not that hard, and you can even look at the paper of Atkinson, which is... The proof is one page long, so it's my uh, I plan to do it, but I have no time. Uh, what I want to do is to introduce the diffusion rate and to state the theorem about the link between the diffusion rate and the, and the reference. So, what, yeah, take the general scheme. So you have a map X from a group F now. And you so those, those two theorems are dedicated only to the Abelian case. So the next one is yeah, you can manage to make it work when the dimension of the group the, the this theorem actually should work when you replace Z by something of dimension one. Uh, which is not in real terms, it is virtually z because of Roman theorem. Uh, diffusion rate. So what is it? Theta. This is a growth. Uh, yeah, the the Limsum, the very same way uh, Samuel introduced it. You look at the farthest distance you get up to time n because now this is discrete time. So the distance. So this is a distance in the kilograph. So you pick one kilograph of f. Uh, over, so if there is a log, the distance of uh, identity of G F N of X over log N, there is a log, yes. This exists 
almost every x. So if, sorry, we need average t. If t from x to x is ergodic, uh, theta exists almost every x and is constant. And so I have time to write. And so this is a, yeah, this is two thirds we get in the weekly model, and there is an interesting relationship between the diffusion rate and the dimension of the group. So what is the so product dimension is not that good. This is not what people call the dimension group. So oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the diffusion rate. What's the relation between t and f here? T? Oh, yeah. There is t from x to x. And you look at the function which allows you to build the cross, the skew product from x times f to x times f. And fn is just the product uh, f of x times f of cx times blah blah blah. Okay. The position in the fiber. So you look at the farthest distance in the fiber you get up to time, time n. Yeah, and you take the limb sup. And so this can not be greater than, so this is smaller than 1, because it do not go faster than, uh, than speed 1. So to do this, yeah, if the map d image is finite, it's no bigger than 1. Uh, and so at the very beginning, I, I make a reminder about random walks and there is uh, something special which happens with respect to the dimension and here as well but you have to take care about the, the diffusion rate and so uh, I will call the dimension of f uh, this is the logarithmic growth so this is not a very good definition I am sorry uh, logarithmic growth of all in F, so in the killing graph of F. So what is important is that the dimension of ZD is D, so it is nice to call it the dimension. And actually, uh, there is a Gromov theorem uh, which asserts that if your uh, dimension, at a, as I defined, is finite, then it is integer, and your group is actually virtually important. So, Gromov. Dim F finite implies uh, dim f belongs to n and uh, f is virtually important so your group is not ugly you cannot have crazy group in order to consider the dimension so my theorem only applies to those virtually important groups so this is the theorem and you can find so that's not my theorem. Uh, it is not written like this in the literature, but uh, you can manage it. So you pick uh, as before t from x to x, uh, ergodic, and this is important. Uh, you pick your function f from x to f. And let's say with finite image. Uh, it's, it, it's just in order to make if yeah if f is completely crazy and you can go very far in very in one step, then this may be larger than one. You need some integrability condition on f. So in order to not state it, I just write it like that. Uh, then if so if the diffusion rate, so theta is the theta of tf, is smaller, strictly smaller than one over the dimension of the group, then uh, tf is greater. Oh, where is the organicity? Sorry. I think I don't know. Ah yes, I need organicity in order that theta is what they find. So if tadana, then tf is regular. And yes, I have one minute to make the proof. This is perfect. So you know, just before making the proof, just a comment. Uh, in the wind tree, wind tree uh, theta is two thirds, and uh, dimension of f is dimension of z two is two. 
And so, even if you prove that the yeah, two-third is not uh, smaller than one half, this is easy, lemma. Uh, <laughs> then, if even you prove that the yeah, the diffusion rate is too small, you do not get automatically the recurrence. But this might be useful if you have a very small diffusion rate, you automatically have recurrence, which is nice. So proof. I won't do the wall proof, but uh, the way it goes, so if it is, uh, if it is not recurrent, so people wonder, what, what we do, we, we pick a wandering set. Set A, and we can always assume that it is contained in the fiber that is a, a, the identity. So the wandering set I record is a, a set for which when you iterate it, sorry, there is one thing which is important here, invertible. When you iterate it, the copies are disjoint. So what you do, you consider A, T of A, T square of A, blah blah blah, and these are disjoint. And because I assume invertibility of my transformation, all of these are the same measure. So up to times uh, n, this will fill fills n uh, times mu to a in measure. But because you have this uh, equality here, but uh, the distance from so far, so here you you have to care about quantificator, but for many x that belongs to A, the distance from X, no, the distance from the identity in the fiber to Fn of X is actually smaller than N to the power theta. Uh, plus, yeah, plus uh, yeah, you fix an epsilon and this is smaller than N theta plus epsilon. And so you have two quantities and you can find out that you cannot belong to a ball, so this means that this, all these sets belong to this, implies that this belongs to some ball, ball of radius n to the theta plus epsilon. And then, what is the growth of the ball? This is given the dimension of f, and so you put dimension of f in power to get the number of elements, and you get a contradiction with the growth here. So, sorry, it's a proof, it goes back and forth. But this is. So we're supposed to use the Atkinson model at some point? No, 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 Here, there is no need of Atkinson. Atkinson is, uh, no, no, Atkinson is very interesting because uh, you need that theta is lesser than 1, but for many functions, it's actually equal to 1, that, that stuff. Sorry, in Atkinson, it is uh, much, yeah, Atkinson is stronger than this result. But uh, these are these terms. Yeah. Atkinson and this theorem are two theorems which may be useful in yes, using principle to uh, Yes, and just to finish, if you want to read something, there is a nice paper of uh, Pat Cooper and Barak Weiss in the context of translation surface and mostly on uh, Abelian covers. And then there is a book of Schmidt, but I think that you do not want to read it. <laughs> and that's it.
But uh, what you obtain in Z2 is actually you come back infinitely often on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis. And even on any line, you, you draw any line, and any trajectory will cross infinitely often the line. Okay. And this is for any line. So this is what Atkinson tells you, but it does not tell you that you come back to your initial point. If you project along, yes. Projection recurs, but not necessarily the worst. And when you have your deck transformation group back in, uh -huh. is it acts for compaction, right? Yes, because you get X and yes. X. Yeah. Okay. Even exactly the compact surface you start with. Okay. So what can you what can you say when you don't have a filter today? Because sometimes it's useful. Uh, sometimes it's useful for internal exchange, it is not useful because it's eligible. What I I'm pretty sure that this theorem works in in relativity case, but then you have to iterate backward and you have to take care about what you are doing. But that can solve. Actually, I don't know. In the proof, it is often useful to have relativity because we can manage. But in that case, I don't know. Yet. I think I can answer it later. In the I don't want to say something wrong. Other questions? Okay, now we'll be keeping at 10.30.